So now let's look at special factoring formulas. Some algebraic expressions can be factored by using the following formulas. The first three are simply special product formulas written backward. Do you remember the formulas for the difference of squares, the perfect and the two perfect squares? Same formula, just going the other way. Instead of multiplying, we're now factoring. We have two more formulas, and that's the difference of cubes and the sum of squares. Right? Excuse, sum of cubes. Right? So um, these are little shortcuts. So instead of having to perhaps use factor by grouping or use um, the rational root test and, and synthetic division to be able to, to figure out the factors on a cubic, uh, you can use these formulas. Let's look at our first two here. And these all, should all be in your notes. Factoring a difference of squares. So we want to factor each expression. Right? So we have 4x squared minus 25. Perfect square minus perfect square. So if a squared is 4x squared, then a must be 2x. If b, excuse me, b squared is 25, then b must be the square root of 25 or 5. So remember, this is in the format a squared minus b squared. That's going to factor to a minus b times a plus b. Right? Replacing the a and b with the values from uh, our problem here. We have the square root of 4x squared, or 2x, minus the square root of 25, which is 5, times the square root of 4x squared, which is 2x, plus the square root of 25, which is 5. And there we go. So 4x squared minus 25 factored is 2x minus 5 times 2x plus 5. Let's do the same thing with the second problem there. All right, so we see we have a difference of squares. x plus y, all squared, is a square. And c squared is a perfect square. All right, so if x plus y squared is equal to a squared, then a must just be x plus y. If b squared is z squared, then b must just be z. So now we can replace, oh, why did I put, I put a squared minus z squared? <laughs> All right, so a squared minus b squared, remember, was going to factor, I'll put it over here, to a minus b times a plus b. Square root of x plus y squared would be x plus y, so our a is x plus y. Minus b, the square root of z squared, which is z. And then our other factor is going to be x plus y plus z. Right? So it's just square root minus square root, square root plus square root. And there we go, that one's done. All right, so factoring difference of squares, even if it looks a little unique, isn't too difficult. Let's look at factoring perfect squares. Right? So if you remember, our perfect squares are going to be of the format a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. All right, let's figure out the a uh, and the b. So uh, here, if a squared is x squared, then a must be x. Let's do the b squared. If b squared is 9, b is going to be 3. And that means 2ab would be 2 times x times 3. And that's 6x. So notice that x squared plus 6x plus 9 is of the format a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. By the way, that's the only reason that I did all of that, <laughs> is to show you the form that it's taking. All right, so uh, a squared plus 2ab plus b squared is going to factor to a plus b times a plus b, or a plus b squared, which means this is going to factor to are we're going to have the square so uh, we're going to have the square root of a squared and the square root of b squared that would be x plus 3 
squared. And if you were to multiply that out, you would indeed get x squared plus 6x plus 9. Okay? Let's take a look at the other one. So as this first part here, we're just show, I'm just showing you that yes, this is a perfect square, and yes, we can just use that factoring, that factoring shortcut. All right, so here, a squared is uh, x squared. That means a is, excuse me, a squared is 2x, uh, 4x squared, 4x squared. The whole expression there. A would be the square root of that, or 2x. B squared is y squared. That means that b would just be the square root of y squared, or y. So now let's see if we have 2ab. All right, so that would be 2. A is 2x, and b is y, and that equals 4xy. We do indeed um, have the format a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So that means that we can factor this to a plus b all squared. And so that's going to be 2x plus y all squared. And there we are. We're done. See how easy that was? All right, so once you recognize it's a perfect square, the factoring is super easy. Let's factor this polynomial. All right, so now we we're going to look at our um, formulas for a difference of cubes and a sum of cubes. Okay. So let's look at the first one. Uh, actually, let's write the formula, and then we'll take that. We'll break that apart. So uh, we can see it's a perfect cube, right? 27 is a perfect cubed. X cubed is a perfect cube. 1 is a perfect cube. So this is uh, of the format a cubed minus b cubed. So to factor it, our factoring formula was a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. And let's identify the a and the b, and then we can use this format. All right, so if a cubed is 27, well then a is the cube root of 27, or 3. Right. And then if b cubed is 1, well then b is also 1, because the cube root 1 to any power is 1. All right, so now we can use that to help us factor. So 27x cubed minus 1 factored, oh, excuse me. A cubed was not 27, it was 27x cubed. I forgot to write the rest of the expression in there. So A is 3x. So this factored would be 3x minus 1 times, we're going to have 3x all squared plus, and then A was 3x, B was 1, and then B squared, 1 squared. I will write out all the steps so that you can see each little part, right, so it makes sense to you. So we can simplify this into its factored form. 3x minus 1 times 3x all squared would be 9x squared. 3x times 1 is just still 3x, and of course 1 squared is 1. And there we go. That's all factored. And that's all there is to it. And it's a lot easier than having to use a rational root test and synthetic division. Let's look at our second one there. All right, so but we, see, we don't see a cube there. We see x to the 6. But now let's think for a moment. If we were to take x squared and cube it, we would have x to the 6. So let's just rewrite this as x squared all cubed plus 8. All right, so if a cubed is x to the 6, that means a is x squared, right? That's what we're cubing. And if b cubed is 8, the cube root of 8 is 2, right? Because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So now we can use our format. Now this is a sum as opposed to a difference. And I should probably write that the formula down because I did not do that. Uh, let's put it over here because we don't have a lot of space. So this is a sum of squares. This is a key, excuse me. I said sum of squares, sum of cubes, a cubed plus b cubed, 
And that's going to factor to a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared. Right, so just slightly different. Right? It starts off with a plus instead of a minus, like the difference of cubes. But we do have one negative sign in there. Uh, otherwise, we'd have a very different expression. We wouldn't have everything dropping out in the middle without that negative sign. All right, so our a is x squared. So we're going to have x squared plus 2 times x squared squared minus all right, so our a is x squared, the b is 2, and then b squared, so that would be plus 2 squared. Let's simplify this. We've got x squared plus 2. x squared squared would be x to the fourth minus 2x squared plus 2 squared, which is 4. And there you go. So you can see that knowing these um, factoring formulas will make things a little easier when you want to factor. Right? All right, so let's take a look at this one. All right, so it maybe it fits one of our formulas and maybe it doesn't. Uh, but first, we see we have some greatest common factors. And we want to factor our greatest common factors out first, and then let's see if we can use any of our rules, or can we use factor by grouping. All right, so we have, uh, first one is 2x to the fourth minus 8x squared. We have a greatest common factor of 2x squared, right? Uh, 2 and 8 are both divisible by 2, and x squared is the smallest factor of x that any one of those terms has. So we'll factor out of 2x squared. 2x to the fourth divided by 2x squared would be x squared. And then 8x squared divided by 2x squared is 4. Oh, now look at that. We have a difference of squares. Right? So this part here is a squared minus b squared. And so that's just going to factor into a minus b times a plus b. And I don't think we need to break all of this apart on this one now, now that we've seen it. All right, so if x squared is a squared, then x is just going to be a. And if negative 4, if uh, 4 is b squared, then 2 is going to be b. And we're going to have the same thing with a plus. And there we go. All right, so we're able to use one of our strategies. All right, let's look at the next one, x to the fifth y squared minus xy to the sixth. Um, we have a greatest common factor. They're all divisible by x, right? just x to the first. Right? That's the smallest factor of x any one of these terms has. And then a y squared. All right? So if we divide by xy squared, x to the fifth divided by um, x would be x to the fourth. And y squared divided by y squared, that's just 1. x divided by x is 1. y to the 6 divided by y squared would be y to the 4th. And this is another perfect square, because we could think of x to the 4th minus y to the 4th as x squared squared minus y squared squared. Right? And so now we're going to follow that same format, right? Because this is an a squared minus b squared. We're going to follow the format a minus b times a plus b. All right, so let's not forget our xy squared. That's our first factor. All right, so if uh, x to the fourth was a squared, we can see in the parentheses there that x squared is our a. And likewise, y squared is our b. So this is going to be x, uh, x times y squared times x squared minus y squared times x squared plus y squared. Right? And so just using that formula for a difference of squares. Right? Not too bad, right? All right, so I'm going to save this one for... Now, you know what, let's, yeah, I'll save this one for the next video. So thanks for watching. Bye for now.